Hello everyone, thank you for making it. I'm Michael Fudge, and this is the first video in a series on mastering the SQL select statement. The select statement is used to query data from our database. It is by far the most complicated of the statements. It has a myriad of options, each of which we will explore via example throughout this series. If you want to follow along, check out applydb.com for instructions on how to get set up yourself with a database and the sample data that I use in these videos so that you can sort of follow along and write the queries with me. In this video, we will take a look at the projection part of the select statement. And the projection is where you decide which columns you will show uh, from your database or from your table, I should say. And we'll look at the following specific things when it comes to the projection. Columns in the wildcard, column aliasing, derived columns, and then using cast to change types. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, here I am out in Azure Data Studio, and for these examples, I'm going to use a database called TinyU from Learn Databases. It's right here. It has three simple tables in it. It has a table of students, it has a table of majors, and then it has a table, a lookup table of dis various year names like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. This database will be simple enough uh, for us to use to, and demonstrate some of these things that we want to show you about the projection line of the select statement. So let me start out by just writing a select statement. And let's just look at students. Now, when I have the asterisk in here, it says use all columns from students. So what I get back is the entire table. Notice how I'm not filtering out any rows here. That's actually a different lesson. This is just on the columns part, the column projections. So when I use an asterisk, it will retrieve all columns from the table. If I want specific columns, I can then choose to do that um, by specifying, that, specifying them in the select line. So for example, let's just grab the student first name, the student last name, and the student GPA from the students table. And we'll just highlight that to run it. And you'll see that, oop, I left a comma out right there. So it's interesting. If you notice what happened, it says student last name and it shows student last name, but the column name is student GPA. And that's what's called a column alias. So we're gonna get to that in a second. I sort of jumped the gum, gun by syntax error, if you will. <laughs> So I'm going to add that comma in there. And now you're going to see that there's uh, three columns in there. If I just run the one query, I have just three columns in my query output. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, this is selecting individual columns. First thing I'd like to talk about beyond the basics is let's talk about column aliasing. So you know, this column says student first name, student last name, student GPA. That might be like a little redundant. So I can actually alias each of these columns as follows. So I can say select and then the column name, student. Now you'll notice that um, Azure Data Studio is not helping me figure out which columns is which. That's because if I add the from first and then go up here, now I'm going to get a little more assistance. See that? It actually reads the schema for me. So that, I, you know, that way I'm not typing like crazy trying to figure this stuff out. So I'm going to uh, use that technique a lot. So student first name, and I'm going to say as to put an alias on here. And I'm going to call this uh, first, let's call it first name like that. And then let's put another one, student last name. And let's alias that as last name. Now I want there to be a space between the two and the SQL parser doesn't like that. You can see it's kind of giving me a problem. I'll even run it to show you. See, so it says syntax uh, error near name. If you want to do this, you have to uh, put brackets around it like that. You have to enclose it in square brackets, like my head is enclosed in square brackets. And then you could can do it that way. And so now I can include an a space in the column. It should be noted that this is not renaming anything in the underlying schema. It's still called student 
underscore first name, student underscore last name. The select statement reads data out of the database, and at the time that it displays it to you, this allows you to rename the column. Okay, that's all we're doing here. We're not changing the schema of the underlying tables at all. We're just renaming columns. All right, let's continue on our journey here and let's do GPA and we'll say um, student GPA. And then I'm not gonna say as, I'm just gonna say GPA because as is actually optional, which sort of bothers me personally because you know I look at this and it doesn't sort of read well and it just opens up the chance of making a mistake like I did up here when I left the comma out, right? When I left the comma out, it's actually taking this column and aliasing it as this name. So I, I like personally, I get in the habit of using the as keyword to separate my column from its name. Okay? But you don't have to do that. But like I said, I, I personally like to get in the habit of doing that. So that there is column aliases, okay? Let's talk about uh, derived columns. So a derived column is a calculated column. So I'll do a couple of examples of this. Maybe we want to make a report where it combines the first name and the last name together into a name. So I might say select star from students, start there. And then let's do first student first name. And then I want to add to that a space. And then I want to add to that the student last name. And then I'm going to alias that as student full name. Let's just do that. I think I'm going to have an error here because I uh, picked the wrong quotes here. In SQL, these are single quotes, not double quotes. The double quotes are actually reserved for aliasing columns as well, like that. Um, rather than using the brackets, you can also use double quotes if you like. It's up to you. There you go. So what I did was I took that, that first name from that student and that second name, and I made a calculation, if you will, of first name plus a space, Robin Space Banks, plus their last name. And then I aliased that column as student full name. Okay, so likewise, let me continue on here. Um, I will add a student GPA, and I won't alias that. And then I'm going to make a one that's 4.0 minus student GPA. And this column is going to be aliased as student points to 4.0. Okay, so how many points do they need to get to a 4.0? I might want to add that, for example, to my report that I'm building. And so this student, Robin Banks, has a 4.0, so um, she needs no points to get to a 4. Whereas this guy down here, Phil McCup, uh, has a 2.7, and he needs 1.29 points to get himself to a 4.0. So it just goes to show you that you can take a column and do a calculation on it and then rename that column. And again, this column does not exist in the table. It is merely output from the query. It is no more than that. Okay. Another thing I wanted to uh, quickly show you um, as far as columns and aliases. What happens if I say select star from students? And then I add an alias to that. Like maybe I'm just going to make it alias one as some number. So this is going to actually display all of the columns from this table. And then it's going to display a column called some number and every single value in it is going to be a one. Okay. Run that. See over here, you have that column, some number. And you might say, is there a way to, to select all the columns, but like maybe I want to show all of these columns, but student notes. No, there's not. You have to, if you want to do that, you have to say select student ID, student first name, student last name, student name, student major ID. You get the point. It gets rather arduous, but that's kind of life in SQL. Okay. 
So the reason I bring this up is I might want to show all the columns and then show something like um, 4.0 as max GPA. And then I might have another column that is student GPA, you know, and have this be uh, 4.0 minus student GPA as points to four, right? And then I can run this query and it shows me all the columns and the aliases that I made, or the derived columns in this case. Okay, so let's conclude with our last thing in the lesson, and that is doing some type conversion with the cast function. Now let's start out simple. If I say select cast, let's see what happens here, um, 10 as varkar, I get 10 back. And you might say, well, what's the difference between the 10 I had here and the 10 I have there? Well, this 10 is an int, and this 10 is actually the equivalent of doing this. It's one zero. Okay. I think a better way to see how cast works, by the way, um, not a good example. is doing it like this, select, let's cast um, 10.5 as an int. And I get 10. So it converts from the type 10.5, which is a decimal, into an int, which has no decimal points, right? And you can alias this, you could say as integer int value, I'm giving it a give it an alias so that there's a column name up there and it doesn't say no column name, right? If I don't alias it, it says no column name up there. That's not very useful in your reporting. You might want to have a column name, right? Okay, so why would you use this? Well, let's go back and do a real world example. So let's go back and look at our students table here. You might want to um, make some kind of message that says, Robin Banks has a 4.0 GPA. See that? I might want to make some kind of message right out of here. So I might want to say, select something as message. And that message, I'll just play along here. And that message is going to say, you know, Robin Banks, I guess I'll just spell it out. as a 4.0 GPA. Maybe that's the message that I want to display, but I don't want it to always say Robin Banks. I want it to use each individual student's name and their own GPA and stuff like that. So you might say, well, oh, I could do this in my sleep, Mike. This would be something like this. It would be select student first name, plus, a space plus the student last name, right? And you're like so impressed with your efforts. So Robin Banks, Robin Banks has a, and then here I want to say, let's see if I can do this right, plus student GPA. GPA. You might say, boom, done. Let's run this report. And you get an error that says error converting type varkar to numeric. So what's going on here? Well, the data type of GPA is a numeric data type. It's decimal. And you're trying to add a numeric to a varkar. And why is it trying to convert the var car to a numeric? Because it's adding this, adding this, adding this. This is all a var car. And then it's trying to convert that to a numeric because that's the next thing. So you actually have to convert this GPA into a var car so that this plus will concatenate them together rather than try to add them. So we would do cast student GPA as var car. 
and that should do it. And then we get our messages like Robin Banks has a 4.0 GPA. Lola DeBrigida has a 2. Point... Come on. 2.732 GPA. Ginger Beer has a 4.0 GPA. Leave Me Home has a 1.916 GPA. Okay, so you get the point. So that's how you would do that using uh, an alias to show you what the column name should be, and then a series of operators to build out your string. Okay, that's basically the gist of the projection line in the SQL select statement.